All right. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to stream. Oh my god, my back has been killing me all day. I feel like I, I've slept wrong, and like my entire existence is like really stiff right now. Hello, everybody. I'm alive. I'm back. <laughs> stream could get deep. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Slay. So true. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Um, I hope you've had a good a couple. Is Crow there? He was here last week. Um, I hope you had a good couple. Uh, what's it called? Oh, my God. I hope you had a good couple weeks because <laughs> I wasn't here last week. I uh, got a last last minute sub. I uh, hope you enjoyed Iggy. You better have. Iggy's great. Um... Hi, Ray, favorite person. Thank you for the lurk. Um, but yeah, no, I... Yeah, Swarback is a mood. It's so stiff right now. Like, it's so not epic <laughs> right now. Um, but it's okay. I'm alive. Um, yeah, we love all the streamers in this house. Hope, house. Hopefully, you all are doing all right. Man, I was early with planning today. Oh, man. It's this song. Okay, hang on. Let me turn on the volume a little bit more. It's a little loud in my ear. Okay. Um... Actually, maybe a little louder than that. Just a moment. Oh, uh, wait. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> the one time I think I have everything prepped and it's all, all over the place. Yeah, okay. Sure. Whatever. Um... Alright. So glad it's spring break. I don't have to miss anything because of school. Real? Didn't know we were supposed to have favorites. You don't have to. <laughs> um, but all right, y'all. Uh, before we get going today, y'all know the drill. Because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. We art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings. We can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges. Or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks. Like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone i have two windows open i don't know why there's two opens here i'm doing a 100 oc drawing challenge you need 100 ocs yeah that's a lot <laughs> i used to do that when i was a kid i just had like tons of ocs i don't really do that anymore um but all right before we get going, though, before we get going with the actual illustration, though, we have the submissions! Yes! I remembered! <laughs> this person did put their name here, but, like, my little avatar covers it, so I put it up again in the top corner. Um, but yes, we have the submissions for this week. Again, it is March. That means we have March of Robots, so, with, like, all your robotic art, you can submit into the Discord. Um... And you have a chance for me to look at it on stream. So this first one is by Max in the Discord. Um, beautiful piece. They said this is their first time submitting. Um, this is a really, really cute one. I love the the little half, <laughs> like the light coming through like a window. And then like the, it's a very like cozy kind of piece. I, I, I really like this one. Um, this is really, really cute. I like the colors. I, I always like more, more pastel kind of muted colors so this one is really really adorable it's it's like kind of like a it, despite it being a robot it's quite simple and i like that i think that the, the lighting is really well done as well really really good placement of your or like understanding of your placement of your light source so very well done very well done this next one is by pun master we have a traditional art piece um i love the movement in this one very nice action very nice um movement within here um it's a really fun kind of like tank robots as well. I really, really like this one. Um, I think this is, I can't tell if this is pencil or charcoal. I know it's some kind of like non-ink <laughs> material. Um, like I can't tell if this was charcoal or if it was pencil and then they like scanned it in and edited it a little bit. Um, but this is a really fun one. I very much like this one. Again, nice action, nice movement. I love fight scenes. So well, well done. Excellent work. This next one is by Pyromania in the Discord. They were saying they really wanted to draw a snake 
and uh, Robotic Snake Woman came out of it. This is a really cool one. Um, a very underrated combo, I think, is black, white, and then, or like, a general black and white scheme, and then orange as the, uh, what's it called? As the accent color. Like, it's a monochromatic, and they have, like, orange as the accent color, and I think that, that like, everybody always uses red or blue, and I think that orange is a really good looking one, too. So, really, really well done. You got that really poisonous, <laughs> poisonous look to this cyborg. Um, beautiful stuff. Beautiful looking stuff. This next piece is by Sloppy in the Discord. This is such a cute robot. I saw this one. I was like, what a cute design. <laughs> I love this little, like, blob in the tank. I love it when you have, like, a... What do you call it? Like, you have, like, a character, and they have, like, like a tank for a head, and there's, like, a goldfish in there, or, like, something else. You use, like, a black ink blob, and I think that that's pretty cool. Um, also, the magenta... It's like the black white magenta that's also like what a good color combination very nice really really cool i love that they like you can tell their expression even though they really don't have a face it's just a blob in there um i always think that expression is a full body thing not just a facial thing so like if you can show off expression just if show off expression and character just from body and like your movement really really well done this one's really cute and I think this is the last one, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is. This one is by Zila Draws Dragons. We love a good cyborg dragon. I am a really big fan of um, fantasy sci-fi. And, like, I love the... Like, I love fantasy, but I love it when you mix robots in there. <laughs> so, like, I love my... I love robotic creatures. I love, like, like robotic fauna, that kind of thing. So, robotic dragon, perfect. Um, this one is beautiful. I love the, like, almost dowsing rod horns that you gave this dragon. Really, really well done. Um, but, yes, there are a lot of things that I like. What's not? Should I have less? Like, <laughs> I think it's good to like a lot of things. Um, but, yes, thank you so, so much for submitting, all of you. Um... Yes, so I tend to choose five per week, but um, next week we'll have another set of five. Um, and yeah, thank you also so much for submitting. Join the Discord if you'd like to submit uh, any of your work for me to possibly take a look at and show off on stream. Um, but yes, all right. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We're gonna do the lessony portion first as always, and then we'll do the illustrative portion. Um, Yo, I got stories today, but, um, let's, sorry, let's get into the lesson -y portion. We are talking, just like the stream title says, we are going to be drawing water today. Um, water's tough because I find that I struggle to teach water. <laughs> um, because water's one of those things where I'm just kind of like, I look at a reference and I figure it out. Um... But water is really, really hard to render. So let's talk about it really quick. I'm just going to give you some of my general tips that I keep in mind. So, like, I won't exactly... Like, none of my streams are, like, step-by-step. Step. This is how you do this. This is how you do this. It's more like how you should think when you work on things like this. Like, the general principles that you might want to keep in mind while you're working on it. Um, so, water. Oh, let me use a different brush. I don't know why I grabbed this one. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so water
sorry, I'm just writing this down. So, water! Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I was silent for a little bit because I can't talk while I'm writing. Um, but water is very similar to reflective surfaces where water has a very high contrast and a hard edge. Where water has very high contrast and a hard edge shadows and highlights. Right, if you were here for the reflective surfaces stream, we talked about that. Um, where reflective surfaces do not tend to have edges that are very, very blended in. If you have any like shadows or highlights, anything to that effect. Um, the difference with water and the rest of reflective surfaces though, is that water is always either transparent or translucent and will distort what is within it right so when you have when you're drawing water if you're drawing somebody who's swimming in water right if you've ever seen like that person from above right it's not like you see like the person is up here hang on let's say he's just doing Say so he's swimming. That's a cool swimming pose. Right? If you have them underwater, like this, right? Maybe you have the ripples. Right? Sure, you can see them underneath, but if you're gonna see them underneath, especially if the water is rippling, their body isn't gonna look the same underwater as it does on top, right? It's gonna be like distorted. And how you choose to distort it is kind of like, you know, up to you, <laughs> right? But you're going to have a more distorted figure underneath the, the water, right? Refraction, that kind of deal. Um, so the difference between it is that it's always transparent or translucent, translucent and will distort what's within it. Pending. How clear. Water is. the ground beneath then only worry about highlights and reflected objects right so depending on how clear the water is shadows may travel through the water onto the ground beneath right if you have very very clear water right if you have a shadow on top you know how usually if we have like a cube right there'll be Let's say we have a cube, right? This cube is opaque here. And then we have like a hand, um, let's, uh, what's, a, what's an easy enough shape? Let's say we have like a, like a triangle above here, right? Tringle. So you've got a triangle above here, right? If this was an opaque object, the triangle's shadow would be on top of the cube and the cube would have a square shaped shadow underneath it, right? However, if let's say that now this cube is like transparent, right? 
What instead we might get is now this triangle's shadow will be down here. And maybe there's like a little bit of a hint of this shadow in here. But really... And then water. Right? So this cube, let's say, is water. This cube, let's say, is opaque. Right? If we have an object over top of, like, another opaque object, we expect that shadow to land on top of it, and it won't go through. If we have water, this shadow is going to go directly through the object onto this area underneath. We can think of the same thing as when we draw somebody swimming, because the light passes through the transparent object, correct? So if we have this person, right, say if we have somebody swimming, and we've got water here, these are really good looking people, <laughs> let's say... You got somebody just kind of here. He's kind of just vibing, right? The shadow is not going to be on top of the water. The shadow is going to be underneath it, right? So we're going to get that shadow underneath, not on top of the water. All right, so depending on how clear the water is, shadows may travel through the water onto the ground beneath, then only worry about highlights and reflected objects. If the water is within shadow, you only really need to worry about reflections after that because it is already as dark as it can get underneath the shadows. So all you need to worry about is reflect things that may be reflected onto the water and um, maybe some highlights that might bounce under there as well. Um, these are very realistic properties, I think. Like very, very realistic ways of thinking about water. Um, I can guarantee that most of chat in here is, are not realistic artists um, because there is a rise in, you know, cartooning and like stylistic work. And that tends to be more interesting nowadays uh, than something super hyper realistic. Um, so let's talk more about general tips that I would give. Anyone know name for those light patterns, the seafloor ripples? So general tips. Try not to, actually don't, I won't say don't. Try not to. Try not to use a single solid color for water, especially if you're doing really, really large bodies of water like the ocean or like a swamp or something. More often than not, it's gonna, it's not gonna be super crystal clear. It's gonna have a color to it. So try not to use a single solid color for water, right? If we've got like something that looks like this, right? If I just choose something kind of like this sort of color, right? And I'm like, boom. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. And then I can draw my, like, oops. My ripples or whatever. I'm not going to bother making them really nice, but, like, if we've kind of got, like, the shadows and then, like, the highlights. This is all that it takes. If you're just drawing the surface of water, by the way, and you really don't want to make anything like super crazy, this is all you need to do, by the way, is you need one layer. So you're going to want this like pattern of just a lot of like circles and ovals, kind of fill in the spaces between them. Copy that and then just make the layer darker underneath and you have the shadow that hits the surface of the water. Like that's it. <laughs> if you want like a really simple kind of looking water, it's really easy. So, like, this is, like, okay. Right? But let's say now that we took this water and we kind of very, very lightly shifted some of the hues around while we're working with it, right? So it's, like, a little bit less single-toned. I 
I also tend to like to use more of like a greenish color. I think it looks a little bit nicer than pure blue. I have been to the ocean, so I have seen what like very pure blueish waters look like, but I personally like this kind of greeny look. All right, so now we have that sort of color going on. And now again, if I choose kind of like, do my kind of shadows. Again, I'm not bothering with like anything crazy good looking at the moment. is better. Right, it gives it a little bit more dimension. In my opinion. Alright, so try not to use a single solid color for water, right? Especially if you have that, like, background bit. Right, it looks a little bit more full of life if you have the um, <clears throat> what do you call it? If you have, like, a slight multicolor to the back. just making circles but it makes sense well it's true right if you look at the surface of water right like this pattern if you do a bunch of like big kind of jelly bean shapes kind of put them all together fill in the smaller spaces with smaller circles and fill in these spaces in between you gotta like clean it up a little bit. Generally, you don't wanna keep these as just circles though. This is like a tip that every artist gives, I think. Like, if you've got this kind of look, you erase back some bits so it's not too thick looking. And then if you like take this, move it slightly, and then make this white. Boom, water reflections. <laughs> and you can move it as far away as you want, right? If you have like this background is blue, this is like the best tip that I have. Like it's like you draw these weird circle patterns and you got it. Um, what brush should you use? Any, you can use literally any. <laughs> Wait, it's live, yes? Um, and colors of the water from one beach to another. Miami Beach is hot, deep blue, light blue, turquoise, emerald green, depending on the distance from the shore. Stunning colors. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really fun to use different colors of water. Like, I think that it's more interesting to have, like, within that, like, leaning to, like, a pure blue to, like, a green kind of blue. It's, like, like, I tend to prefer that greenish thing. But, like, if you want to use, like, a deeper blue, for sure. How to draw fish under the water without it looking flat? This. You want to make sure that you have that refraction. You want them to match. Um, you want them to match that refraction underneath. Speaking of, next tip is refraction. Actually, you know what? I already talked about it. It's already up there. Um, so let's just say try not to. One too much. There will be. St. Patrick's Day? Yes, it is. And there will be reflections, right? Try not to blend too much. Especially when we have water, it tends to look a little bit better if you, um, you know, blend a little bit less. Let's take one of these colors again. And just blend in a little bit for, whoopsies. 
just for the, the difference in water. We don't want it to be too single colored. We want there to be a lot of color going on in here. But let's say this time I'm doing waves of some kind. All right, rather than just like, what do you call it? Is the brush being used for writing and whatnot a custom brush? Yes. Is it available for using other programs like Medibang and Krita? No. Medibang does not take any extra brushes. It is a proprietary system, um, which is one of the main things I didn't like about Medibang. <laughs> like, you cannot upload external brushes to Medibang. So... The best way to, to figure out how to draw something is to look up reference. So let's look up waves. Or water ripples. Oh my god, this is not what I want. Ocean ripples. There we go. So let's take a look at some ocean ripples really quickly. Alright. Notice the number one shape that you see a lot of. It's triangles. You see a lot of tringles going on here, right? And these edges can be pretty harsh at a lot of times. Do you see this though? Right? That's just like the, 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 the what's it called? The beams <laughs> you can do, right? But there's a lot of triangle. That's, that's falsely made. But like you see, there's a lot of reflection, reflections of the sun, right? There's an object, there's like a building here. You can see that reflected into the water, right? But again, very, very hard edged. Right? It's gonna start saying tringles. Tringles is a good word. Um, right? But you see a lot of, like, depending on where the light source is, we can tell that it's back here. We have a lot of just the general watercolor back here. And then the light that hits it, right? It's very, very high contrast. Super, super high contrast. Can you please explain how to draw distortion? I tend to just follow the shape of the waves. I'll show you in a second. All right, so if I got a lot of tringles. I tend to start with the, the shadows. I'm also not trying to make this look beautiful because if I do, then I'm going to be here forever. Water actually takes a very long time to draw. I'm also a little more cartoony, so I don't tend to draw water like this. <laughs> A lot of just like general tringles in the wave. And then let's say we've got some highlights going on. Where I just kind of follow the shape of the tringles. My brightest source of light. Coming from up here, probably. Maybe I want to blend it a little bit more. But, like, you don't want it to be too crazy, right? Especially if you're going really simple. Like, blending like crazy is not something you need to worry about. Alright? But then let's say that, like, we're reflecting the sky off to the side here. So we're going to add in more tringles. So it's like we're reflecting something off of here as well. All right, so maybe there's something light blue that we're reflecting over there. I'm starting to add in different shapes. I'm starting to add in some loops to kind of give it a bit of shape dimension as well. Water is kind of random, so it's better... I find that it's better not to think and just start drawing. And if it ends up not looking good, then you restart. Which is like a weird piece of advice, but I find that it works. But yeah, right? Try not to blend too much and there will be reflections. I made a whole new layer and I didn't even use it. Uh, 
Um, I'll talk about I'll talk about how to draw stuff refracted while I'm doing the piece. So I'm just gonna do one more tip, uh, which is. Find a style. Do con. Don't get too caught in realism, right? Find a style, don't get too caught up in realism. Right? We're used to seeing all of that, like, all of these, like, tutorials that are like, oh, this is how you draw water, and, like, this, it's gonna look super realistic here, right? Not everybody draws like that, though. Right? As long as you keep the general principles in mind, you'll probably have your work look like water just fine. Like, maybe if we even just drew water, like, like this, right? Then we've got like you know, like get interesting get intriguing nobody needs water to look exactly the same every single time right uh maybe we've got one that looks a little bit more well this is like let's say you've got like a more like animated <laughs> kind of water right maybe we've got waves that kind of And the straw will like a like a water droplet just hit the water. Let's use this one actually. Actually, that should have been a darker color. Let's use. I'm realizing now, before stream started, uh, before stream starts, usually what I do is I, like, if I have a lesson that I'm not super certain on, I test out my theories beforehand. Um, and I test out, like, the ways that I would draw beforehand. Um, I should have kept the water that I drew for that, because I did a bunch of, like, tests. I drew a cute duck, too. Right? Like, this one's, like, a little bit more as if it was, like, animated. Right? Let's say the light source is here. But we can tell these are water, right? It keeps its basic principles, so we still kind of understand what's going on, right? <laughs> Draw another cute duck, okay. Um, we still understand what's going on, right? This is how I draw ducks. There we go. <laughs> right, find a style. Don't get too caught up in realism. Right? No matter how it is that we draw our water, whether it's like super realistic or like something a little bit more cartoony, right? I tend to default to this kind of style, right? That's like a little bit more. Like pretty cell shaded. I'd add, I add the transparency where it's needed, but if it's just the water on its own, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. 
have it'll read as water all right like this isn't super rendered right i used three colors but we can tell it's water right it's the same thing with these two it's like it's really really basically rendered we have a more rendered water above it and like somewhere in between above that but we can tell that this is all water right as long as we kind of have the general idea of what water is we'll be all good <laughs> but all right that's about as much as i'm willing to do <laughs> for this stream um i'll talk more about water refraction while we're actually illustrating the piece you guys though voted for um swamp water y'all wanted swamp water for this stream realistic water droplets i'm gonna be 100 percent with you you can go anywhere and Google realistic water droplet. And that is like, that is like the number one thing that anybody can look up. And then it's like, how do you draw a realistic water droplet? It's there. It'll be right there. Um, all right, though. I'm so sorry. Give me like five seconds. I will be right back. Hang on. Let me just... Be good.
Put a one in chat if you can hear me. Just double checking. <laughs> I can see my avatar moving, but I need to I need to make sure. <laughs> All right, poggers. Oh, that's a lot of ones. All right, poggers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let's see here. You can stop with the ones. I get it. I see. Thank you, though. Swamp. Okay, so... Swamp water... Y'all kept on asking about refractions and stuff like that. I realized swamp water is uh, really opaque. <laughs> it's very, very translucent. You're not going to see a lot coming through it. Um... It is March of Robots. So... What I want to do is draw a robot in a swamp because I'm like, I don't want to just, because I don't want to miss out on March of Robots. I'm not going to lie. So I would quite like to hear, I would, I would quite like to draw a robot <laughs> that will be in the water. All right, let's see here. Um... trying to think how am I gonna draw this okay we're gonna make this one very very um this one's gonna be a really simple looking one over our own robot no I think it's just gonna be like a robot that's exploring I'm gonna make it just a little guy Like low tad him. I'm gonna make him look kind of like low tad. <laughs> kind of a little lily pad on top. I have a I have a thing where I like to make like little robots with like big tops to their bodies and little legs. So I think he's I think he's I think that's cute. <laughs> Like a little lily pad guy. Um, yeah, I always find that like a lot of like the teachable things happen when like we get to color. So for now, I just get to kind of talk about what I want to talk about at this moment. So, we'll walk in bird path. Yeah, they're saying that like this swamp. Well, like swamps tend to have a lot of like trees that are kind of just in the water. I'm looking at pictures of swamp off swamps off to the side that you guys can't see right now. It's like your little latte robot. Yeah, no, I just tend to do whenever I do like really quick robots. I tend to have the same shape language for all of them. <laughs> or at least for a good chunk of them. So we're working with the same kind of looking robot right now, yeah. Let me tell y'all. I had a D&D &D session yesterday, right? Like, we had D&D &D yesterday. Our, our DM had been, like, teasing like a session he's like guys i've been waiting for this session since like we started playing and i was like oh really we play that was the most intense session i've had in so long like that session was crazy okay like i just like it went nuts it was so fun um sorry i'm continuing to look at swaps over here um first of all one of the PCs died, so that was a lot. Um, 
he's back now. He's fine. We didn't realize that one of our, our other PCs had, um, we didn't realize one of our PCs had, um, what is it called? Revivify. So he was brought back to life, but like, that scared the crap out of me. It was, it was my partner's character. It was Pierce. It was our, our, our elf ranger. And like, the thing is, is that that's Korn's guardian. So like, if he died, yo, Korn would have never been the same. I would have had to play sad Korn for the longest time. And he probably still would be sad Korn. He would probably like never recover. Um, so that was cool. It was like, we got to see the, the big bad guy again. Somebody got turned into like a partial lich. It was so cool. I'm a level 4 rogue. I'm a level 5 barbarian, so like, don't worry. <laughs> so, low, uh, it's OP are just broken. OP is overpowered, yeah. 1 is, tends to be seen in a... Well, broken is like overpowered, but in like a way that's like... In a way that it shouldn't be, kind of. Good thing I had Revivify. Yeah, he's fine because... Ray's character Soren had Reviv. I was so like, like Crow was distraught. I was distraught. It was like, and then we didn't realize Soren, one of the other PCs, had Reviv. Oh my god! Thank God. Um. Regardless, though, what a neat session. We had so much going on. Like I can't even talk about half of it because it's like technically not okay. Um, but. Because it's kind of violent, but, like, it was such a good session. Like, screaming crying about that. I think I've been keeping that a secret for 15 plus sessions, cries. Oh my god, Frey! Hello! I'm so sorry, Frey, did you say something before? I've been, like, so focused. <laughs> um... Trying to think of. Sorry, I have like notifications. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm trying to think of how to draw this. Okay, now we got it. Um, but yeah, it was such a good like session. We had like goofier moments too. Like it wasn't just all serious. Like we had a really big fight. Like that was a cool fight. Um, and it was big and it was terrifying. Um. No Hall of Fisherman Link. Okay, okay, okay. Um. And then, like. Well, we found out so many things. Like, first of all, with Frey's character, we found. Like, Frey's character has been looking for his brother for, like, ever. And then this session, we found him. I predicted it, okay? We found a tiefling in a closet, right? He was, like, in there, knocked out cold. And we were like, it was a tiefling, it was a red tiefling. And we were like, we were like, huh, I wonder who this is. But he has like, cause we were in this like tower to get like a bounty, like to, to find like a thing for, I find a necklace for, for this woman. And like, apparently like some assassins had stolen it. <laughs> And, like, we saw that we found, like, a tiefling clutching said necklace in this, like, closet. And I was like, we bring him back. And I was like, watch, this is going to be Atros's brother. I'm betting you. This is going to be Atros's brother. And they're like, okay. It's kind of funny that you say that. But okay. It was Atros's brother. I'm a genius, I think. I'm pretty, I like, I'm pretty sure I'm, like, I'm, like, 5 million IQ. I was like, cause <laughs> K okay, our DM was like, was like, you see like this magic, it's like a shroud that starts to come off of him and his skin turns to like this blue. And I was like, I'm a genius, bro. <laughs> I'm so genius. Um, anyway, it turned out to be, to be the, the brother and we were like, I was like, yo, I'm so smart. <laughs> um, yeah, he fought alongside us for a little bit. He was mostly uh, knocked out cold for the fight, though. When one of the PCs died. But he came back. It's okay. We're fine. It's all good here. Um... I 
Anywho. That was, that was so, it was such a good, like, I'm gonna say that this lily pad is like solar paneling. We can, I'm gonna go back to draw that in though. Um, so d, d yesterday was really good. I enjoy the modesty. Okay, Rolex 2014, you can't. <laughs> Just to clarify, because I always have to clarify, I am memeing, but, like, I was very proud of myself in the moment. <laughs> um. Making a not as character, nice. So you can't tell me to be modest when you have a username like Rolex2014, I... The robot's name is Atticus. This one? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think I've given this this one a name. No, I haven't. I haven't given this one a name. Shade, I feel hurt. It. It's okay. <laughs> it's all love. Lobot's giving low tad vibes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going for. I wanted low tad. Oh, and then the reason I wasn't here last week was because my partner came to visit. So it was a nice time showing him around the area. It was so much public transport he'd never taken before, so it was really nice to, to show him around. <laughs> I just came from rewatching the cloud stream, so the black liner is jarring. Yeah, I like working in like a bajillion different styles. Or just choosing what I think is the most appropriate for the situation. In this case, water takes a really long time if I try to render it in that style. And I've only got about an hour left. So I'm like, I change how I work depending on how much time I have left. <laughs> and clouds I know are like really easy to draw. So I was like, okay. He can go for a more painted style for this one. And I even finished early, so like... Wasn't anything crazy, I don't think. But for water, especially something like a swamp, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> yeah, what's their name? I don't know. I haven't I haven't come up with something. Or I haven't seen anything that I like yet either. I've seen a cloud before. Yeah, true. <laughs> Different styles are fun to experiment with. It's true. Olive is cute. I don't know if I. I don't know if I'm feeling all of the. Liana <gasps> paddle. <laughs> no, I love paddle. <laughs> paddle is so cute. I love Paddle. <laughs> There's something really cute about Paddle. <laughs> Cause he's paddling. I love it. We have a winner. I love it. Paddle. It's Paddle. <laughs> it's Tan Paddle. Paddle the lily pad robot. Yes. I love it. As he's swimming in water, he's a robot. How do you dunk your phone in the water? It's called being waterproof. Modern problems require modern solutions, my friend. Paddle is just a little guy. It's so true. It's 
Submarines are technically robots. Well, vehicles, but in, in, in a way. Yeah, I guess suppose so. <laughs> The West's technology is amazing? I'm pretty sure submarines were not invented here. <laughs> Where was a submarine? Where was the submarine invented? Never mind, it was invented at Yale University in, in, in America. It was indeed invented in the West. Wow, the one time where I'm like, eh, there's no way it was invented over here. It was actually invented over here. I mean, I'm not in America, but. Um, where was water proof? When was water proofing invented? Uh, how long has waterproofing been around? Modern waterproofing industry, 1900s. Uh, the, when was waterproof? Where was waterproofing invented? Ancient Egyptians! <laughs> waterproofing count for ships, too? I suppose so. Waterproofing was uh, originally coined from the ancient Egyptians, apparently. Or Paddle's parents? Paddle's a robot. <laughs> Paddle probably doesn't have parents. Probably a creator, though. Ancient Paddle. No, Paddle is, Paddle is a little guy. Modern robot. My original idea was to just create, like, a robot that was themed after a swamp. So, yes, that kind of, like overgrown kind of look but then i was like everybody does that i think it'd be more fun to just have a robot swimming in a swamp <laughs> how did he get there nobody knows the egyptians know where the clouds came from super true who's his creator i don't know In the U.S. Civil War, the South had a submarine. It kept sinking. I see. <laughs> Where's this creator? Good question. I do not have lore for Paddle. Paddle just exists to vibe. Sometimes I just choose not to make lore. I'm like, you know, you're just a you're just a little guy. I don't I don't feel like making lore for you. Paddle passed the vibe check. I'm glad. I I he's just a little guy. Like I don't I don't see why he wouldn't. Okay, this balance is actually really off. Let me move some things around. Little guys need lore too. It's in the Constitution of Jamaica. Very specific. <laughs> Paddle simply just existed in a swamp. Always has and always will. True.
Let's make it so there's a bigger tree here. Yeah. Okay. That looks a little bit better. He like a swim. True. Hello. Hello, Icio. Welcome in. Have I been pronouncing your name correctly, Icio? I keep on I keep on thinking that I, I like I hope I am, but I, I'm never certain. <laughs> Maybe he gets energy from the sun. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm thinking like the lily pad is like a... It's like a solar panel. You're pronouncing it right. Alright, pond. I see you. Nice. Nuclear battery is at least one year of battery life. True. True. See, but if he stays in the sun forever and he's solar powered... Infinite battery. So real. Shoot, I don't remember what my my brush size was. No! Hang on. Okay, so that's too large. Is it 13? I think it's 13. Okay. Where does the sun go at night? Then he sleeps! <laughs> When you get charged, when you have solar power, you charge it in the sun. So it's like as if you're going to bed with like 100% battery. And even then he might just sleep. Go into sleep mode. Use no battery at all. Sleep at night to save on battery. Exactly. Exactly. Charles paddle, me too. How am I doing this lovely night? It's just the afternoon, the late afternoon for me. I'm doing okay. My back still hurts, but I mean, I guess that's just kind of how I live. <laughs> Does paddle ever get caught in the weeds? Probably. But it's okay. He's round, so he can just roll back out. He's, he's round, so it's easy to just squeeze back out. Got nothing that could hitch. Yeah, I think that's pretty all right. Sure. Yeah, see, I know that this is, like, gonna paddle make friends with the animals. I believe so. I'd like to think so. Because swamp water is very... <laughs> swamp by Minecraft. Um, swamp water is very, like, brownish. It's like a... It's like a Why do you name your line RT instead of L? It has been like, it's... So the way that I used to organize my line work was I had layers D for diagram, C for color, T for thin line, and then O for outline. So my thin line layer would be my line or it would be like my sketch cleanup basically. So I used to have three line, like three layers. So it would be my sketch, my second sketch, and my liner. Um, and then... As I got older, 
I like stopped having my that third layer. I had like just the sketch and then the outline if I didn't outline. Um, but like it's so T stands for thin line, but it's gotten to the point where like I've just gotten so used to seeing T that I haven't even bothered to change it. <laughs> like I totally doesn't stand for what it needed to stand for anymore. But I'm just at the point where I'm like, I'm too lazy to change it now. <laughs> and like, really, it's like, it works for me. So like, I'm not even going to bother. Y'all are in Canada? We are indeed. Or at least I am. The studio is based in Canada. We here at Wayne Canvas are based in Canada. I don't even name layer layers. You should! Naming your layers is very good for you. <laughs> it's a corporation. Just a small company. We're a small business. I am not the owner, though. Just letting you know. I am, I'm just one of the streamers. One of the instructors. One of the teachers, because we're not a YouTube... We're not necessarily just like a YouTube channel we're technically like an art school exclamation point classes so like I'm one of the instructors and there's like other instructors that are part of the channel um the owner of the studio is Faye Faye pops in here sometimes Faye Lou she's been my lovely boss for like three years now <laughs> it's been over three no it's been over three years it's been it's been like four I don't know what Amy is provocating so many with naming stuff. See, I know that. Yeah. Out of 50 plus, I simply recognize at this point by number or appearance. If you're going to work professionally in digital art, that won't fly. Like, you do have to eventually learn how to name your layers by... So other people can access your files. But if you understand it and you're the only one touching it, then, like... All good, man. I mean, I've only got three layers. So, like... I'm probably going to have more soon, though. of the nature of what I'm drawing. You have also have a physical building where you teach or is it online only? It used to be a physical building. It used to only be a physical building. Um, and then uh, like the pandemic hit. And then... We switched to online only. Originally, like, the online was just a solution at the time. Um, and then my boss was like, you know what? Let's just make it online only. And then uh, we've been here ever since. <laughs> Any more stories? Oh, yeah. Um, well, other than D&D. Because, &D, like, I was just going to talk about D&D &D this whole time. Because I was, I was still freaking out about the fact that, like, Pierce almost died. Like, well, see, like, the thing is, he did die. Right? Like, he got, like, his final words in there. It was, like, we we were in, like, combat. And we had, like, a, like Pierce went down to zero HP. And then he didn't fail his death saves. No, no, no. The enemy kept on attacking him while he was down. So it just, it just automatically, like, failed all of his death saves for him. So then he like went down and we were like we were like oh my god and like we, he paused like our our DM used to, usually plays music for us so he pauses he's like Pierce you got any last words while you're you want to tell us what happens when you while you're dying and I like like my head was in my hands I was like we were all just like huh ah, right and like and like Pierce looks over to my character Corn right like the like the character Pierce looks over to Corn. And he goes, like, reach the sky for me. And he dies! And I was like, ah! Right? <laughs> like, no, don't! Right? Um. And then, like, we... <laughs> so we, we finish off the fight. 
Um, my best friend got the how do you want to do this? Um, so uh, they killed off the, the thing and then we ran over to Pierce and like um, my best friend's character Sora and Sora was like, does anybody have a diamond? And I didn't think anybody did, but um, one of our characters, Atros, I don't know if Frey is still in here, but Atros went on, Atros decided to go on a date with somebody sessions ago, long, long sessions ago. And he gave Atros a diamond necklace. So he got to, so we actually did have a diamond. Atros just fumbled it out of the necklace and gave it, uh, and gave it to him so we could cast Revivify. That was, it was so crazy. It was like, if Atros had never gone on that date, then we would have never had a diamond and Pierce wouldn't have been able to revive. Um, well, I mean, we had another, technically we had another option, which was um, a party num member named Scribbles. Um, our tabaxi wizard had very recently pulled from the deck of many things. And what he had was he pulled the fates. And what the fates do is you can choose to change. Um, you can choose to change one thing that happened in your lifetime. Like you can choose to change it or make it not happen at all. Right? So he could have just asked to make Pierce's death not happen. Um... But it was... So you threatened the DM with violence until they... until they didn't kill your party members. No, not really. Um, out of all the videos I've seen to help out with others' art tutorials, it's definitely the best, mainly because I actually learned something while watching this guy. I'm glad! Um, yes, it's no pen pressure. I don't prefer to work with it, but I find that I'm faster when I work with it. So I'm working with it just for right now. Um, I tend to switch it up every once in a while. Um... He actually, he never actually told anyone Vril gave him that diamond too. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, like, Atros just had it. Like, it was just like, I totally forgot too that you had a diamond. I was like, it's like, does anybody have a diamond? I'm like, I was like, no, nobody does. And then Atros out here, like, yes, I do. And I'm like, wait, that's right. Um, so anyway, we, but the way that it works with this, um, is like, we, um, our DM runs with the, like, the Matt Mercer rules, which is, like, you have to convince the, the soul to come back to the body. Um, and Soren, like, well, he's casting Revivify, goes, like, it's like, you have so much left to do, it's like, you, you can't leave us yet, you can't leave Korn here. All right, Korn's my character, for those of you who don't know. And he goes... So that 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 was enough to convince Pierce. Pierce saw like his dad in the afterlife. Um, but that was enough to convince Pierce, and Pierce came back. Actually, no, wait, Pierce was talking to his dad, and like the dad was like, Oh, looks like you're actually not done here yet. And Pierce was like, Yeah, I can't leave my son alone. And I was like, <laughs> well, <you> no. <know. laughs> well, like, no, but yes, yeah, like you're coming back. Um Both had secrets that culminated in teamwork. So true. Um because, like, it's, it's a whole thing. Right now, we're, like, Pierce and Cord are very much... They're practically father and son at this point. Um, but they're not really... It's just, like... They have a very, like, parental child relationship. Um, and, like... It's like, I can't go yet. I, ha I still have to, like... I can't leave my son alone. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, Pierce gets revived. I just got here. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the D&D session I had yesterday, which drove me insane. Um, it was so good. Like, so Pierce comes back to life and, like, he wakes up with a start. And he's, like, crying. And we're all crying. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I love D&D. <laughs> Sam, I've been opening the animal-related tutorials a lot. Whatever I'm drawing. So I've never improved things, though. Still struggling with wings, especially. But I'm making progress. That's great. I'm glad. Animals, I think, are something that I just spent a really long time on, especially in high school. So, like, I'm glad that my culmination of knowledge <laughs> helps y'all in some way, shape, or form. Um, why are you mainly painting instead of just using a paintbrush? 
bucket is a preference or what? It's preference. Um, I find that the paint bucket doesn't tend to get all the nooks and crannies that I want. Um, so I'm just manually painting to get that down. It's also relaxing. I think it's like, it's a nice kind of mundane thing. There's also some openings that like the paint bucket would go straight through. Um, because a lot of these lines are broken up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just preference basically. How long have I been drawing for? Uh, my entire life. It, I came out of the womb with a pencil in hand. My mother gave birth to me and was like, wow, it's a miracle. She has a pencil in her hand already. Anyway, it's been almost 22 years. <laughs> Paint bucket is annoying. Uh, I don't mind it. It's like, I use it sometimes, but like I find if I'm actually trying to go really fast, but this one, I'm like, I can go a little bit slower. That's supposed to be rock. But paint buckets can be really, really annoying. They just don't give you the same, like, feeling, I guess. I had trouble to get the paint bucket to work with CSP. I think CSP, out of all the paint buckets I've used, CSPs is the best. But I think the paint bucket is just finicky across all programs. That hurt. <laughs> You saw that pencil I was birthed with? Yes, I do, indeed. Um, but yeah, so D&D was really good. And then, like, we went... Because we were fighting this thing because it was a... We were brought to this room and, like, this woman... She wanted to become, like, a lich. And, like, we were... Wanted to stop her. But she had, like, a guard. Which, by the way is one of my, like, best friend's old PCs. Like, our DM just, like, asked if he could, if he could use her and was, like... And then he got the go-ahead, so we fought her. Um... But... Like, she was a bodyguard for this woman who was trying to become a lich. Um, and... So we, we beat the bodyguard, who was really, really tough, and then... We got to, like, the basement area where she was, like, about, like, we found her and, like, our, for those who actually play D&D, uh, &D, we found our BBEG, uh, which stands for Big Bad Evil Guy, for those who don't play. Um, and he was, like, helping her become this lich, and we're like, lich? No, lich. L-I-C-H. It's like an undead thing. Um, that's okay. Um... I lasso mostly. I lasso sometimes. It depends. I lasso for shading a lot, actually. Um, but we were like, we were like, do you actually trust the Tygen? Like, do you trust Tygen Whistle Song? Like, look at him. He's like, he, Tygen Whistle Song's like a Tabaxi. He's like a like a mad scientist kind of character. Actually, I was. I hang on. I was. He asked me to draw Tygen. Did I like the Lich? No. Um. No, she became, um... Oh, shoot. I can't remember what it was called. It's a... It's a bone something. Bone saw? Bone something. Because it turned out that he just wanted to turn her into something. So this is what Tygen looks like. Um, because I was asked to draw our piece... Our D, uh, D, BBEG. Um, so he's like this mad scientist tabaxi. Bone claw, that's the one. Um, he turned her into a bone claw instead. Um, but, like... It was really fun to draw I, I didn't realize how good I was drawing scrungly critters. Um, you know, he's he's messed up. Tygen is so messed up. Um, yeah, he kidnapped me, bro. <laughs> um, but he, like... So, like, we were like, are you really gonna trust Tygen? Because I look at him, like, the funny thing that, like, one of our uh, PCs, Lunin, was... He was like, are you really gonna trust somebody who laughs like that? Because <laughs> um, he, like, he has, like... Our, our DM is really good at playing evil characters, so, like, that laugh was nuts. Um, but, but she was, like, she really, really wanted to become, like, this lich, so she was, like, in denial about it. And she's like, no, it's like, you're all just trying to, like, get in my way, like, none of you know what this is about, kind of thing. Um, so she goes through with the experiment, and uh, she becomes a bone claw, not a lich. Um... It was so, it was so good. 
The scruffy one, all right. Yeah, no, he is, he is supposed to be, like, scrungly. <laughs> the description that I was given was, can you draw just the most scrungly cat? Like a mad scientist-looking scrungly tabaxi. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, no, lich. Lich. L-I-C-H. A lich is like, a, it's like an undead. It's like an immortal thing. Um... Yeah, we're gonna say that the lily pad is like a solar panel. I'm learning new things. D&D is so fun. Like, I love D&D. <laughs> it's Sorry, what? Gar? <laughs> Let's just are creatures who want to live forever. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, liches aren't just a D&D &D thing. You can look them up. Yeah, liches are, like, everywhere. It's, it's just a fantasy thing. Liches specifically are just a fantasy thing. Bone Claw is a D&D &D thing, I think. <laughs> to my knowledge, anyway. Was it- No, it was not the lich from Adventure. Have I not seen Overlord? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. <laughs> D&D has its own language, it seems. In in a couple ways, yeah, no, it's true. Your D&D character's a carnivorous duck? That's amazing. Mine is a, uh... Is an eight-year-old dragonborn barbarian. <laughs> so, I mean... I got a friend to finally take me to the world of D&D. It's, it's yet to happen, but I look forward to becoming part of the madness. Brilliant! I always find that it's, like... I learned about D&D &D by watching others play d and I didn't actually play it myself first. Um, sorry, I need to bring this back up. But alright, what I'm gonna do now, oh, we're actually gonna get back to talking about art. What I'm gonna talk about now, what I'm gonna draw now, is this little guy reflecting under the water, right? So, what I'm gonna do... Is I'm just gonna follow the shape of the ripples and kind of just draw in his general shape where he would be. Just very, very loosely in there. Not actually drawing him per se, but bits of him. Right? So it's like I can still kind of see him under there. And feel free to break up the shape in a couple places. But you can kind of generally still get the silhouette, right? You can still tell what's going on. But it's pretty broken up because the water is refracting it, right? It's being distorted by the water and where the water is going. So you can still kind of tell where everything is and what's going on, but... It's not like... It's not like super prominent, you know? My group is a chaotic duck, an overlord demon, a blacksmith, dwarf, dragonborn hybrid. That's incredible. <laughs> Talking about art, what is this, an art school? I know, I'm crazy. Character idea already for it. Sentient armor suit with no direction, only if they wander the world following people and doing whatever they're told. That sounds like a Warforged. I really want to play a Warforged. I've been wanting to play a Warforged for a while. I have an idea for one. I can't talk about her much. I drew Ethelon in a previous stream, but I can't really talk about her backstory because it's got a TOS. But I would love to play as Ethelon at some point. Oh, just all theory going on? Just all theory always goes on. And right now, I'm doing the reflections of the eyes. Because his eyes do glow a little bit. There's gonna be a little bit of that in the water. More forge are very cool and sore Echo Knights. We fought an Echo Knight! That's what- that's what, uh, she was last night. She was like a- the- like the- the bodyguard. We fought an Echo Knight. She was so tough! <laughs> Cause she would spawn in the Echo, and then she would swap places with the Echo! And then, like- <laughs> I run an Echo Knight. Yo, let's go! <laughs> it was so cool. She was so cool, but also, like, Pierce died. 
He came back, Blink, man. Yo, Crow was so distraught, bro. I was distraught. Zam. <laughs> I have no idea what a Warforged is. Warforged are fantasy robots. Um... So, like, a Warforge is a species of D&D character. Technically, you don't have to go along with, you know, like, the species that they give you, but, like, you should. <laughs> it just makes it easier. Um, Nildra was created as a boss at, at her conception, so Kay took a lot of those initial features. Oh, vibes. So cool, but so annoying. Yeah, especially because I can project my echo omnidirectional. Yeah, yeah. It was it was so rough because it was like at one point we had like so the character's name was Nildra. That's what the original PC was. So like it was like I remember what the what the layout was. It was like she was here and we were all in like the squares around. It was like a D5, and like the echo was over here with like two of our characters. Or something like that. Yeah, so it was like Hang on. Oh, so if it was me... Eh, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like, there was the echo here. I was, like, here, and then there was, like... Or, no, there was a space missing here for a while because we had, like... Pierce was right here, and this was our caster, Atros, who was also our healer. Um, and then, like, I was here, and then there was, like, Sorin, and then there was, like, Lunin. And her echo was right here, but she was aiming for, like, our healer and Pierce. So, like, <laughs> she swapped places with her echo, and she was actively chasing after Pierce and our healer, Atros. It was nutty! <laughs> Wait, I jumped up to raise my hand when Sorin asked if anyone had a diamond. Yeah, I know! The only thing I know of is what species Keyleth is. Yeah, yeah, Keyleth's part of the uh, crit roll. Um, I intimidated um, Addison. Enemy camp's guards are making an echo crawl out of the ground. That's so good. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's the Texas thing I've ever heard. It's D and D is so fun. Like it's so like. I, per I love playing D&D with my party, and, like, my, my party is really great, because a lot of them consist of, like, voice actors. Like, they're- or they just have really, really nice voices, and they're really good at, like, acting and RPing. So it's, like, it's so fun to play with them. Um, so it's, like, we get, like, our RP is always so, like, fun and interesting, and, like, I take a lot of inspiration from them because, like, I'm, like, the newest D&D player. Um, so, like, it's really fun to, like, try and bounce off of their energy a lot. Because I find that I'm not, I'm, like, I'm pretty inexperienced when it comes to RP. But, like, I've, I've got a lot of people around me who are, like, more experienced than I am. So I get that kind of, like, that experience from them. I played it. I played a deranged man with a spear who would swallow artifacts necessary for progression, bruh! <laughs> I love Warforged so much because of this one D&D &D podcast I watched. They convinced a bodyguard Warforged to come join them being pirates. They gave him a Texan accent. That's brilliant. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I try. I love playing as corn. You do amazing as Soren as well, Ray. Um. Man, I can't wait for next session. We have to wait for two weeks. <laughs> Well, you have to use it because I used a cringe RP text RP at text plus my middle school years. That's vibes. No, you do great, Frey. You do so great. I love playing with HRs. But yeah, that's that's about as like from off the top of my head, that's about as much D and D stories as I got. But um, my partner visited last week. Um, that's why I wasn't here. Um. I, I took him around um, Toronto because he'd never he'd never been to a lot of like the public transport and stuff like that. It was so like it was so new to him and it was really it was really cute because I'm like I it's so like normal to me. <laughs> he was like you guys just have like trains and subways everywhere and I'm like yeah. <laughs> it's like you don't. <laughs> I guess not. She caught this live. Yes, you did. One time I checked on an NPC and he died. No! <laughs> F. That'll look so adorable. Thank you. I should have made this. Oh, no. Hang on. Let's... It's too late. I don't 
think so. Ooh, no, it's not. Okay. Because this shadow should have been like a deeper green because it's in the water. And this should have like a light spattering of green over top of it. Yes, there we go. That's better. I was like, there's something wrong here. <laughs> I love corn. I like really want to learn more, lean more into the corn, becoming protective of him because he just isn't strong thing more. Yeah. I love to play D and D like no one plays it around me, and I have no idea where to start. Sounds like a lot of wild fun stories come from it though. Let's your imagination run wild. It is super like that. D and D is like uh, my partner brought up a good point at one point. It's like, hang on, I gotta open a window, so I'm gonna be over here. But you can still hear me. Um. My partner brought up a cool, good point. Like, if you've got a card shop around you, you can ask, uh, see if they have any open tables, because sometimes people will just be running, like, games. Um, you can find groups online. Like, if you got online friends, you can ask them. Um, online's a very valid option. That's where I started playing. Um, I actually only play online. <laughs> um, or, like, if you want to sate the want, like, sometimes, ju like, just watch a D&D podcast. Like, I I learned everything that I knew through watching my friends play first. Uh, well, then it was just people that I watch. Now we're all friends. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to shade that. Um, but yeah. Hello, welcome in. Great Oracle roll. I actually started watching... Well, now I have to say it's the show that shall not be named. But, like, I now I watch... Um, I started off by watching... Uh, the D and D podcast that Crow is part of, Gar. <laughs> I'm not. I'm technically not allowed to talk about it. Um. I do not watch Kurt Roll though, which is. Everybody tells me to watch Kurt Roll. I still haven't even watched Vox Machina yet, and I'm like, like I still like haven't like sat down to watch it. <laughs> I really should. <laughs> if you're wondering how I draw it without doing line art, I can just kind of scribble the form of the shape that I want. Some people do that. Don't do line art. I kind of want to start doing line art. I don't know. You got any mouse or line art tips? I do not work with a mouse. I apologize. Um, I have no experience working with a mouse because um, every time that I work with a mouse, it hurts my hand like crazy. Really work like illustrating with a mouse is actually not great for your hand in the long run. Um, if possible, I'd actually recommend that you get uh, a tablet because um, it is more natural for your hand to hold a pencil than it is to click with a mouse. Um, you can get tablets pretty cheap nowadays. You haven't watched Vox Machina yet? We have to watch Mighty Nine Animated together when it comes out. All right, I'm down for that. You just gotta remind me. <laughs> we can set like nights where we watch it. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Just let me know. Just remind me. I'm super down for that. A lost my solid B. It's kind of hard to use. It's it's definitely like hard to use at first. I think that like when I first started using a tablet, it was really really rough. It's one of those things you get used to. Um, but yeah, like there's there's no no hate on mouse artists at all. Like I think y'all are too powerful. But like if you like, it's just, it's just bad for your hand. Like, I've learned. It's just really not good for your hand. Fox Machina's awesome. It looks so good. Like, every time that I see it, it's, it's animated by Titmouse. And, like, Titmouse just has a really good animation team. Right? It's Titmouse, right? I'm not animators. <laughs> It's time out. Okay, sick. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the health effects? It's like the- you are constantly holding your hand in, um, pronation. So it's- it's like your wrist is- or your bones are crossing over. And it's also you're stressing out, like, specific, um, like, you're tensing up specific nerves in your fingers. It's the same thing with, like, when you're holding a pencil, but a pencil is a slightly more natural position. Um... You just gotta really watch out. It would be worse if it was a trackpad. Trackpads are really bad. <laughs> yeah, probably not very ergonomic for your hand. It might put you at risk for repeated stress injury. Yes. 
It super is. Yes, animated series about a D&D &D game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the, the world's most famous D&D &D game. <laughs> Crit Roll is the most famous one. Titmouse animates Star Trek Lower Decks. Dex. Titmouse animates everything, I swear. Like, Titmouse has, like, such... Like, has bangers, like, Vox Machina. And, like, I've watched Lower Decks. I think Lower Decks is really funny. Um, and then they've also animated Big Mouth. So it's, like, where... Like, where is the standard? <laughs> you know? I like this piece. This piece is kind of fun. It's, like, very... It's very, like, chill. Oh, I'm kind of worried about the continuing to draw my OC now. I would just, like... I, you said, well, you said you lost your pen for your tablet. I think that it's, yeah, like maybe just, maybe just invest in another tablet if you can. Like if you get a used one, you can get a used one without a screen for, because you use a mouse, you're, you're used to working without like a screen looking down. So like, yeah, like I, I just recommend like investing in a, in an art tablet. It's time. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bunch of really cheap tablets you can find for less than most mice. It's true. Yeah, you can get really cheap art tablets nowadays. Uh, da, da. Oh, I didn't close my door. You have any tips for hand exercises for artists? Yeah, I've got lots. Give me a second. Um, hold your hand out as if you're about to do a thumbs up to somebody. Like, but just keep your hand in a fist and move your like uh, like wrist up and down um if you ever see the pose where it's like the pose that you do with your hands with, as if you're trying to pretend to be an italian point downwards and instead like continue to like stretch your wrist you're pointing downwards just the general like rotation of your wrists take your fingers and like push them out like interlock them and push outwards um Face your palm outwards and, like, take your fingers and bend them back towards your elbow. That tends to help. Forearm curls, yep. There's so many different hand exercises. Like, I exercise my wrists more than any other part of my body. <laughs> like, if there is anything that I try to be as ergonomic with as possible, it is my wrist and my hand. Because I'm like, I I need these. <laughs> these are like what runs my career right now. Um, ain't no way I'm going to like possibly risk like losing them, you know? I like how the animation of your character should go through their voice. Thank you. Veto Tube is a very nice tool. <laughs> Highly recommend. It's free on itch.io. Vita Tube Mini. Really easy to set up. Really nice to use. It's how I... This is the, the software I tell, like... Because I, I take PNG Tuber commissions. So this is the software that I tell my PNG Tuber... This is the software that I use for my PNG Tubers. Actually, I have a couple of those. One person wanted a... An, another outfit for their PNG Tuber. And somebody just wants a whole new PNG Tuber. And I'm like, okay. Sounds good. will happen if someone steps on Patty. He'll be fine. Water. Water. <laughs> Forgot to do the reflection of every other object in this scene. <laughs> or the refractions, my bad. The refractions of every other object in this scene. So let me just do that really quick. This is thicker water, so we're not gonna see, like, the refractions for, like, ever. We're just gonna see them a little bit. Have you ever heard of Drawfee? I have indeed. <laughs> what 
What if two tons land on the paddle suddenly? He'll be fine. How strong is Paddle? Pretty strong. Also, it sounds like y'all want Paddle to be destroyed. Like, I don't- I don't get- I don't see what the Paddle hate is all about all of a sudden. Like, it seems like y'all want Paddle to be, like, decimated. I think Chad is just concerned for Paddle's safety. <laughs> Paddle will be fine. He's a robot. If anything, he can be rebuilt. I also need to add in like light, like highlights. Were you built by who? Who knows? That's a secret. You guys have a video for scars and abrasions? We do not, no. It's pretty TOS, so we can't really do that. <laughs> Paddle the guardian of some swamp fish. Yeah, some swamp fish, some frogs. tell that this is water just by me adding a stroke or two here and there, right? Like, it's not like I'm crazy rendering this out. I have three layers, right? Don't worry about over-rendering anything. Don't worry about, like, you know, the realism techniques that you see everywhere. Right? Find your own style. As long as you have the general principles in mind, as long as you kind of understand like, where stuff should go, right? You just gotta know how stuff works, and then you can draw it in any way. <laughs> He's a little Swamp Scout. He's a little Swamp Scout! So true! Anything is possible with the right theory behind. more chill than there's so many other live stream chats it's nice yeah it's what happens when you have a slightly smaller chat it's not super crazy
It's just slightly more opaque water, so there will be a little bit of shadow. Oh my god, guys! Fourth layer! If Pato was in a movie, I'd watch it. Give it up for layer four! Woo! Fourth layer! <laughs> Four layers. I know, we're going kind of crazy here, guys. I better slow down. Now this water is slightly more opaque. So I am actually going to add shadow on top of it. Hang on. Crazy be a good thing. Crazy is good sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> You can make some bad decisions if you go a little too too nuts. <laughs> Only four layers. I like to work with a very small amount of layers. Iggy and I both work with a very small amount of layers. It's really up to you how your workflow ends up being. Some people work with a lot of layers, some people work with very few. I so happen to be one who works with very few. Um, but not everybody works with very few. It's a very destructive way of working, the way that I'm working right now. <laughs> so I don't necessarily recommend it, but... We're almost done, really. And we've got like 10 or so minutes, so I'll probably add a little bit more detail here or there. But I don't want to overwork it, so I'm like... I work on one layer until I get bored of that one and make a new one. That's how some people work, yeah. I don't know Baba is you. Oh boy! I haven't heard about Baba is you in forever, but yes, I do. Sorry, I have to keep on stretching. My back is not agreeing. Like... More than usual, my back is not agreeing with me today. I think some random fish silhouettes are now made with fishies of battle babysits. I'll add a couple, sure. We've got some time. Some shading. I might. I kind of want I like this flat look. I'm like, I kinda oh I forgot the I forgot the, the reflection of the refraction of that top grass bit. I'll add that in there. jokes but yeah I don't want to I don't want to overdo the shading I kind of like this like flat look that's going on <laughs> Jesse you blew my mind with two layers I'm going mental with four if this keeps up I don't know how to react I'm sorry but you gotta you gotta keep up with me I think I think you just gotta keep up man get that yeah it's it's for the style it's like sometimes i just choose to do different things depending on how i want to work any way that you work is valid as long as you have an explanation for it in this case i'm like i really want like a simplistic kind of look i really want something very very like simple so i'm like i don't want to overwork anything um so adding more shading might overwork it a little so i'm like I don't know if I want to add anything. I do need some- I kind of want some glows to this light, though.
Brain's exploding in the chat. It's crazy. <laughs> Give it up, guys, for the fifth layer, y'all. The fifth layer. My god. We're going we're going nuts right now. Chat, we are going absolutely nuts right now. You gotta keep up. We gotta keep up. Fifth layer, pretty nutty. <laughs> no way. Fifth layer. I know, guys. I know. Pretty crazy. We're going pretty crazy right now. I'm going to explode. I know. Fifth layer. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I just had to do it. I just had to do it. Look at that there. Isn't that nice? One more, come on, come on, we can do one more, guys. <laughs> the fact that traditional artists have one layer, I know, crazy. Never mind, I take it back. Layer 5 is popping off right now, so true. The <laughs> layer franchise is going nuts. Layer gang is going insane right now. Yeah, let's add some, let's add some fish shadows. Some little fish shadows. Why not? Can we get six pop off? I don't know, y'all. That's going kind of crazy. I don't. I don't know if I can handle that. Hard to read them as fish. I'll see if I like them afterwards because I'll just add them on now. About tadpoles. I think after the fish, this is gonna be enough. Like, I don't want to add too much. A big rule of designing uh, in general is if you have too much detail, it's like there's no detail at all. Um, so with the fish, it's kind of pushing it, so I'd rather just leave it at the fish. I just went ponyo. <laughs> ponyo. Um. Yeah, I think we're in terms of like detailing, I think we're actually good for now. We have that pop of orange. You see what's nice? It's like that pop of orange. You can still see it zoomed all the way out here, which is our focal, our lovely little focal point. Actually, I should have made these like more saturated, I think. Yeah, that looks better. Yeah, cool. Epic. Text and CSP automatically assigns each line of text its own layer. Yeah, yeah, programs do that automatically. That's just a thing that happens. Do you go until 5? Uh, over here, it's until 6 p.m. Yes, but yeah, 5 more minutes. <clears throat> Contrast all the other colors. Yes, correct. Orange is like... This is like a split complementary in a way. Not quite, but it's, it's getting pretty close to there. Um, they're very opposite colors to one another. And the stripe on the water, how the glow on the water, unlike the eyes, because it goes under. You're right, though. It actually should have a little reflection. As well. Like, it goes underneath, but it should still have, like, a slight reflection on top as well. That looks a little awkward. Hang on.
See, I think my thought process was like this strip isn't really glowing outwards, but these eyes are like headlights. But I'm like, they shouldn't be... It shouldn't be the same intensity if that's the case, so that should probably... Yeah. Let's just make that slightly, yeah, so it doesn't reflect onto the water. <laughs> Tips about the way how to make theory writing so it wasn't unneeded. <laughs> For our knowledge, if you can't justify why it should, can't draw justify why it shouldn't be there. Pretty much, yeah. You know, a lot of artists do that, so like it's not just a me thing. <laughs> Put some glow on the bottom of the lily pad. No, no, I didn't. Just one more layer, guys. We're adding a folder. I know. Crazy. All right. There's a folder. We're going to take that folder. We're going to copy it. We're going to paste it. And that makes a merged layer. Crazy, right? We're going nutso right now. Hang on. Uh, let's turn this into a gradient app. <laughs> a folder? No, right? This is... Nuts, guys. I'm sorry. I, I really did just have to do it to y'all. Let's make this into like a yellow. Or like a green. And then we can make this one into like a lime green. Let's make this one more of a side. I've gone too far, too much. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I just, I really had to do it, you know? What about their friends? What about? It's just very, very slight. And then, guys, two more layers. Isn't that nutty? Like, <laughs> what? Thank you for the ten dollar dollar, Osu. Without width, just kind of makes it slightly more vibrant. System's gonna overload. I know it's crazy, but guys. We have to make another folder and put it all in there. We're gonna copy that folder again and merge it to make, once again, another layer. We're almost- we're almost at 10, y'all. We're almost at 10. I'm gonna blur that bad boy. Lower the opacity to give it that nice glowy look. And then guess what, guys? We're gonna do it again. We're gonna copy, paste, merge that layer. We're gonna add some noise, pixelate it, lower that down. So now it's got that nice green texture. But that boys is all the layers that we are adding. That my friends, four, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm sorry, it was nine layers in total. Not so. Not so. Pretty nuts, though. No method to the layer madness. Nine layers in total, guys. Nuts. That's insane. That's insanity. Three more than six, right? Crazy. Bro, I'm right. <sighs> Nutty. Nutty. <laughs> Alright, y'all know. That is 6pm. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, if you don't know too much about us, if you're new here, welcome to the studio. We're not just an art, uh, 
channel we are also an art studio if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer check out check them out beancanvas.com you can check out the classes that we offer i am one of the instructors we are starting our new term soon so if you'd like to sign up for those classes you may um we just finished our merch break camp i believe this file that you see in front of you along with the lesson itself both of those can be found on our discord exclamation point discord um follow us on instagram facebook i don't use facebook i don't know if that's if that's how it works but um join us on discord as well talk to other art nerds see me sometimes see the other people sometimes um but if you would like the working files, if you want to see all nine of these layers in their glory, you're going to have to become a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Um, so you'll be able to take a look through them um, later on down the line. So if you become a Wing Canvas uh, member or a Patreon member, you'll be able to see my working files and my process behind them. Um, all right. Next stream... Shoot, what is next stream? Next stream. Oh, I don't think we've uploaded the actual stream that I'm doing next. But this Sunday, um, Vanessa will be teaching y'all how to draw cats. So you'll be drawing cats with Vanessa on Sunday. Um, I have no clue what I'm going to be doing on <laughs> uh, Friday next week. Um, is that stream next Friday? I think so, right? Yeah. My partner's coming back next week. Um, anyway. Say to draw cats. Yeah, Sunday is how to draw cats. Unsure about next week Friday. Um, but all right. So that'll be in a couple days this Sunday. You'll be able to learn how to draw cats. So thank you all so so much for joining, and I'll see y'all next week. Au revoir. Bye bye.